Hey guys, welcome. We got another really good one for you today. One of those elusive, affordable, non-M4 reviews. And today we're looking at the Elite Force MRX HKMP5 competition kit, which comes with both the A5 stock and the A4 fixed stock. It's a competition level set and it's a pretty cool concept to get it all in one package and at a fairly entry level price. But is the gun you get in that set worth taking out onto the field? That's the question we're gonna be focusing on today. So stay tuned. Hey, did you guys know we have patches? You can pick up your own salt shaker swag at the link in the description below. But more than that, we want your patches for our patch wall. If you've got a team patch or a local field patch, send it to our physical address in the description below with a couple of sentences about your team or your field, and we'll shout it out in an upcoming video. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're looking at the Elite Force Umarex HK MP5 AEG competition kit. This guy is provided to us by Fox Aerosol for review where you can pick one up for $185. It's a pretty cool concept to get both the A4 and the A5 PDW stock all in one kit, but this is an entry level gun. And I did find where you could buy just the A4 competition version out there for $145, but I couldn't find anywhere out there where you could get the A5 PDW version by itself. So this kit might be the only way that you can get that A5 PDW version on the competition level gun. So basically you're paying $40 to get that PDW stock. It definitely begs the question of whether or not you're getting the best bang for your buck. So let's look at the externals and the internals and the performance of this guy to answer exactly that. But before we do, let's see what's in the box. Oh, what's in the box? All right, everybody, welcome. Today we're taking a look at this guy right here. This is the Elite Force Umarex HK MP5 competition kit. All right, let's have a look inside. Nice simple styrofoam cutouts. We've got our owner's manual, registration card, warranty information, some product information, two winding high capacity 200 round magazines. And I think when we did the unboxing on this, I called these plastic, but now that I'm having a second look at them, I think they are metal. Yep, definitely metal. Traditional jamming rod an extra retaining pin, and then a little hex key. It is all polymer, has a metal outer barrel, internally has a metal version two gearbox, of course a metal magazine, but everything else is polymer. If you wanna take this from its A5 variety to the A4 variety, you're just gonna undo this screw right here, take this entire buttstock off, and then this will slide right on, and then you screw it back on. But this is officially licensed by Heckler & Koch. You've got all your Heckler & Koch trades on both sides. And obviously since you have got this skeletonized PDW stock on the back, the battery's not gonna go there. So the battery is gonna go up here in the foreguard. All right guys, so that about does it for what comes in the box. So let's go talk about this gun. All right guys, let's go over this guy. This is a fully licensed one-to-one -one replica of the HK MP5. It's got a metal outer barrel, but then after that, pretty much everything on this gun is polymer. The upper and lower receiver are all polymer, as is the foregrip and the buttstock, and the pistol grip is kind of an integrated piece of polymer with a lower. And I have to say, it's definitely a lighter grade of polymer. It definitely has kind of that toy vibe, kind of creaky plastic feel to it. So let's start up front. We've got this removable QD flash hider that reveals a smaller HK three lug orange flash hider. And we were originally trying to figure out what this guy was, but it turns out this is actually a one-to-one -one replica of the actual three lug nine millimeter quick detach flash hider that's made for the real MP5. And if I owned this gun, I would probably spray paint this guy black. That way I don't have to worry about replacing the emblazoned orange tip. I can just put this QD flash hider on there if I want it to look more authentic. And then if I want it to be safe for travel, you just take this guy off. You got another emblazoned orange tip underneath there to make it look nice and safe. So that kind of eliminates the need of even having to think about removing that emblazoned orange tip. The charging handle does lock back, but this piece is also plastic. And there's no moving parts on the fake ejection port right here because there's no hop up revealed inside of this. The hop up is actually on the side where you've got kind of a sniper gun style adjustable hop up slider that moves back and forth. But even though it's only plastic, the charging handle still gives that satisfying HK slab. You've got plastic sling mounts at the left side of the front and integrated into the PDW stock, as well as on the left side of the A4 stock. But then your main one's gonna be this metal sling mount at the base of the stock itself right here. It's got ambidextrous fire selection controls 
and ambidextrous mag release by virtue of the fact that it's just behind the magazine right here. The magazine itself is a 200 round high cap winding magazine and it does come with two of these and they are metal. Up front, you've got a fixed polymer ghost ring sight. Now on the rear, you've got this adjustable dial sight. And I didn't think I would like these, but they work quite well. And I actually like these more than the traditional iron sights. The gun does not come with any tactical rails straight out of the box, but you can get an aftermarket claw mount that mounts to the upper receiver in these indentations right here. And it can add an upper Picatinny rail piece for you so that you can mount an optic or any aftermarket parts that you may want. There's a paddle right behind the pistol grip right here that you can depress to change the positions on your PDW stock. And obviously since you have a PDW stock, you're not gonna be putting any batteries back here in the A5 variation. So the battery actually goes in the handguard up front. You just take this pin out, pull the handguard off, and there's a small Tamiya adapter up front where you can put probably a small stick style LiPo battery or a set of nunchuck batteries. But if you remove this A5 PDW stock, there is actually wiring in the back of the gun so that you can also wire a battery into the fixed A4 stock if you want to. Now on the inside, this gun does have a full metal version two gearbox, but it does not have a MOSFET. And it advertises shooting 330 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs, but we're gonna go check it out for ourselves and see exactly how this guy performs right now. With 0.2 gram BBs, the FPS is a little higher than expected, averaging about 345, but well under that indoor CQB limit. And on an 11.1 light bow, you're getting about 16 rounds per second, which is actually a little bit higher than its elite brother. Now range, accuracy, the hop up were good, but we're gonna let you listen and see if you can pick up on what had us a little bit worried, and then we'll talk about it. All right, guys, there you go. So this gun shoots a little bit harder than advertised, staying right around 345 feet per second, but still easily under that indoor CQB limit and strong enough to use outdoors as well if you want to. So it's good for indoors and out. This slider hop-up adjustment on the side worked decently well. We had it set at about the midpoint to hold up 0.2 gram BBs on a line at 100 feet. And at that distance, it had pretty decent accuracy and pretty decent consistency. The grouping was a little bit less than what I would like to have seen and definitely less than its elite brother. But at 100 feet, everything still was in the targeted torso. My biggest concern with this gun is how it sounded and felt as I was shooting it. The gears were a little bit loud and grindy, like maybe it hasn't been shimmed all that well. And it shook and thunked a lot inside of this lower receiver. And interestingly, the motor itself actually shook and thunk quite a bit also inside of the pistol grip. I might be a little bit concerned about what that could mean for the longevity and durability for this gun. But like we said, it is a beginner gun. It is, it is not your forever gun. And you know, this gun kind of falls into a similar situation as a lot of other non M4 beginner type reviews that we've done. Just looking for pure quality and performance for the dollar, there are better guns out there at the 185 price point. But if you don't want an M4, or if you just really like the MP5 styling and you don't want to get that $350 Elite one, this one shoots perfectly fine. And you know, if MP5s are really what you're into, yeah, go for it. So guys, tell us what you think about this HK MP5 competition level kit. Would you pay the extra 40 bucks to get that A5 style PDW stock in the same packaging? Mm, maybe. But hey guys, if you like what we're doing here and you'd like to help the channel out, like, comment, and share this video with somebody. And if you really want to support the channel and get access to a little bit of extra content, maybe consider becoming a Patreon. But definitely, if you haven't already, join us on our Airsoft journey by hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video that comes out every Tuesday with bonus videos on Fridays. And until then, we'll see you next time.